Good morning, lovely yogis from uh, Ventura Buddhist Study Center on Lac Mission. Welcome to Saturday morning yoga. And most of you are in your homes, and but you're in our hearts. So let us do our practice together, closing your eyes opening your hands and opening your heart. Start to notice the breath now, long, slow, deep breaths. Notice when you exhale how lovely it is just to relax into the exhale. And again, when you breathe full and deep, notice on the exhale a feeling of release, feeling that you can let go. And just do that, just for a few breaths. Notice how the shoulders and the neck just naturally relax on the exhale. Let your face relax. Let your heart relax. And then slowly and gently, just opening your eyes just half the way, allowing just a sliver of light in. And then open your eyes all the way. Look down at your hands and think about any work you've done since you've last done your yoga. And then offer that work up, clasping your hands together. We turn the palms up into the sky. Oh, and when you... Any chance you can, breathe deep into those lungs. Let the rib cage expand. Let the diaphragm expand. Let the shoulders lift up. See how deep a breath you can really take. And when you exhale, exhale completely. Empty the lungs all the way to the bottom. We're going to squeeze the fingers once and then release, open out, and just pause when you come to where your shoulders are. We'll turn that right palm up and that left arm in, and just turn to gaze out over the upturned hand. And then release and switch. We're turning the left hand up and turn that right arm all the way in. And then just go back and forth just a little bit, turning the head to gaze out over the palm that's turned up. Notice the tension leaving the body, all the worries, all the stress, let it go. Let yourself be free just for this little while while you practice your yoga. And then feeling the weight of the air on your hands. Feel as though you're bouncing little balls of air. And then inhale, lift the hands up through the clouds. We'll clasp again, taking now a different finger first. Let your brain become active. We're turning the palms up. Press up into your hands and then find your upper arms and bring them back down into the shoulders. Pressing into your shins, stretching into your knees, lifting your thumbs, dropping the little finger. Let yourself be completely involved in all of the details of the pose. We're going to squeeze the fingers once and then open out. Good. Feel as though you're opening your heart as you bring the hands all the way down and just barely touch the floor. Lift the armpit chest. We'll take that right hand to the left leg, left hand behind. Lift and twist and turn. So it's really nice to start your yoga practice the same way. Have a little routine of poses that takes you out of your everyday and into the extraordinary journey of yoga. We'll release, come back for an inhale, and on the exhale, switch left hand over, right hand behind, lift, twist, turn, lift, twist, turn. So we give the mind a little bit of time to catch up with the fact that we're doing our yoga. We'll release, come back and go ahead and straighten out your legs. Press the back of your legs down, stretch out into your feet, lift the armpit chest. Dandasana. Good. 
and then release. We'll take the inside of our knees one at a time and pull them back, soles of the feet together. And take your hands behind and just drop your knees. Press the heels, drop the knees, relax and soften the groin. And then if you feel like you can stay nice and tall, you can bring your hands around to your ankles. So if everything collapses here, then you could sit up high on some blankets or on a bolster or on a block. If your back stays tall, clasp your hands around your feet, lift up tall into the crown of the head, softly close your eyes and breathe. Breathe in peace. Breathe out any tension. Good. And then slowly releasing your feet, you're going to bring the knees together at the same time. And we're going to wrap our arms around our shins and just lift the feet up off the floor. So this will warm us up a little bit. Good. So staying on the sit bones, you don't want to roll back onto your lower back, just stay sitting there and see what it feels like to release your hands. Good. And if all is going well, maybe we could straighten the right leg. And bend it. Straighten the left leg. And bend it. Straighten both legs, big inhale. Stretch out into your fingers. Gaze at one spot and smile. And then wrap up again. Mats covered with hot lava. Keep the feet up. Good. We're going to reach down and hold the edges of the feet. Big inhale and on the exhale. See if you can lift the feet up. Turn the feet towards the morning sun. Gaze up one spot and smile. Then release, oh, hot lava, don't touch the feet yet. We're going to reach in and we'll take the toes this time. First, two fingers of each hand, holding on to the toes. Exhale, open the legs up and out. Let your belly kind of crawl up the thighs. Try and straighten the knees and the mount. So you're pulling back with the fingers, pressing out with the heels. And then inhale and on your exhale, we'll open the legs out wide. Stretch into your heels, drop your head back. Look up at the ceiling. See if you can pick one spot to look at. And then smile at that spot. Good, we're going to take one big inhale here. And on the exhale, we're going to drop the legs down. And push the feet apart. And then take your hands behind, lift your hips up and push the hips towards the front of the mat. Press out into your feet. Good, and then just lift up. Feel as though you were reaching for a particular sunbeam that shone just there this morning for you to brighten the day. Feel as though you were accepting that lovely energy from our great friend, the sun. Good. Staying tall now, we'll just bring the arms down and we'll take the back of the knees at the same time, pull the knees towards your face and lay down. We bring our white belt close by. Good. So we'll just pull that right knee into the chest and straighten the left leg along the floor and flex both feet. Good. Release. And switch, pull your left leg in, straighten your right leg, flex the feet, pull the knee in as close as you can. And then release. We're going to get that right belt. And we we'll belt up our right heel and take the right heel up into the sky. Pull down with your hands, turn your inner elbows towards your face, and then straighten out your left leg. So we're just going to run through some hamstring poses. And this, of course, helps the hamstring, hip, and the lower back. You bend your elbows out, pull the leg a little closer to you. You might lift your head there. And then put the belt into your right hand as you drop your head back. 
Exhale, take your right leg out to the right, left hand out to the left. Stretch into the right heel, press down into that left hip. Feel as though somebody is pressing this left hip to the floor as you take that right arm and right leg to the right. And this left arm might stretch itself out along the floor. You could turn your head and gaze over that left hand. And of course, if you're practicing this at home and you want to hold these longer, of course, just hold them long, lovely, and lush. Let the yoga flow in to the places and the spaces that need it. We're going to inhale, take that right leg up, then leave your right leg there. You just take your left leg up, put the left heel in, put the right foot on the floor. We're pulling down with our hands, pressing up with the heel. Turn the inner elbows and then straighten that right leg. So when you feel something working, ask yourself, is it painful? So if it's painful, you're going to back off from that? Or does it feel like work? If it feels like work, yes, it should feel like some type of work. Good work. Now we're going to bend your elbows out to the side, pull that left leg a little closer, lift your head, look at your knee, and then put your belt over into your left hand. You might hold closer to the ankle there. And on the next exhale, take the left leg out to the left, press that right hip down. Imagine somebody pressing down. You can use your own hand to press down. Stretch into the left heel. And then if it feels nice to complete the pose, take that right arm out to the right. And turn your head, gazing at the lovely air, at the lovely hand, at the openness of the hand. Now while you're in this pose, you want to make sure that this right heel is in line with the right shoulder. So there's a lovely straight line all along. Look for the angles, look for the lines of energy. And then when you find a nice straight line, imagine an arrow going along there and the energy just flowing along to the tip of the arrow. And the tip of the arrow is trying to find that space where you're tight, where you're sore, where you're weary, you're lonely. Breathe towards that place. We're going to inhale, take that leg back up. And then we we'll put our belt off to the side and put your feet flat on the ground. And walk your feet off the edges of the mat and drop your knees together. Maybe walk them a little bit further and drop the knees together. And your little toe side of your foot might come up. And then we're going to drop that right knee to the floor and take your left and your left heel to the outside of your right knee. Now this right arm wants to get in on all of this lovely feeling, so take that right arm along by your head, reach into your fingers over your head, and stretch down and into your right knee. This left hand could maybe be on the belly. Let that hand be aware of the rise and the fall of the lovely breath. Breathing in peace. And breathing out any loneliness. Maybe we're separated from people that we love right now. Breathe in their memory. Know that the love that they have for you is still there, still alive. Oh, and then release. We take that right hand down and we place our feet back on the mat. Drop the knees together, and then walk the feet off the mat and drop the knees together. So as far away as you can, the more the internal rotation you can create inside these femurs. We're going to drop the inner left knee down and take the outer right heel to the outside of the left knee. So you don't have to press it down or anything. Just let the weight of the foot do the work. And then this left hand wants to stretch and open and yawn. And then the yawning effect as it come all the way down the left side of the body into the left knee. 
and this right hand can rest maybe on the belly again, bringing you information. How deep is the breath? How deep are the memories, the secrets? See it all inside, all of you, everything that makes up you. Let the yoga bring it all together so that you can be a complete human being. And then we take that left hand down and we release the legs. And we're going to take this right foot in behind the left leg, across the mat, and take the outside of this left heel on the inside of your right knee. And that's it. Just that. And you drop the hands out to the side and be aware of the work that's going on in the hips. So when I talk about my right, it's your left. My left is your right because I'm your mirror. Good. So this is external rotation. Feel the hips releasing, relaxing, opening like the petals of a lovely flower opening to the morning sun. We're going to release and switch. And to do that, we place our feet flat on the ground and then find this left foot and take it in behind your right. Try to keep your shin in line with the front of the mat and take your outer right heel into the inside of that left knee and then bloom, relax, release, open, let the yoga in there. Hips, of course, can be very tight. Hold on, holding on to their secrets. We like to open and release. Good. Now we're going to release and come out of that. So you can put your feet on the floor, you can roll to your sides, come up, or you could come straight up. So the last one of that little hip series, we're going to do um, one hip at a time. And most people want this kind of a setup. You could get uh, your couch pillows, pillows from your bed, so a cross pillow and then a long one, so long as you're able to keep your spine nice and straight. And then a lot of people will want a little support for their hips, so a block or a blanket or a smaller pillow. Some of you don't need any of this. What we're going to do is we're going to put the right foot in Virasana. So when I look down, I can see my right foot there beside my hip. And this block is going to help by going over to the other hip. This left foot is going to be on the inside. And I'm going to press down and sit up nice and tall. Maybe this will be enough for some people. Some people will be able to come back, lay on the bolster. If that happens, you're going to hold your elbows and take them over your head and just relax back and down. So here we take the lower back, stretch it towards the front of the mat, and the pit of the belly, we lift that towards the top head. That will be the equal and the opposite element here. Now some of you guys, I know you've been doing your practice, so you might not need all of this. Some might need just one bolster, and some people will be able to do full pose. Right foot beside the right hip, left foot to the inside of the knee, and then just take it in increments. We go on to our elbows. Now if the knee pops up, then you gotta come up and put something under your bottom and stay up. But if the knee stays down, then we're gonna come onto our shoulder blades. And if the shoulder blades feel okay, then we take the hands way out over the head. And then we're going to start to work the pose. Lower back towards the front of the mat, pit of the belly towards the top of the head. And keep an action, a little arrow of energy and action moving towards that right knee. The length of the side body, the length of the inner arms, the length of the outer arms. Good. Lovely pose for digestion. Sometimes uh, when we eat a lot and uh, when we're stuck at home a lot, maybe we're eating all our snacks. So this is really nice to relieve the, the organs, get the digestion going. It's good for menstrual cramps. 
good for that lower back, it's good for the hips, it's really good for the knee. Some people say, I can't do that pose, my knee is too tight. Try and get into this pose, use all the supports you can, and then slowly let yourself come to the floor. Okay, let's do the other side. Good, so come back up, give yourself a moment to straighten both legs, come to Dandasana. So if you were doing it flat on the floor, the way to get into it is just to take that left foot beside the left hip. Now, if this left foot kicked out like this, this is not good for the ankle, you want to come higher. And the way we would come higher is we take that block and put it in under the opposite hip. Some people might need two blocks, three blocks, whatever it takes. Okay, so we have to complete the other side. So those of you using your pillows, you're going to do that, or come back onto the floor. Good, elbows, shoulder blades. Remember, keep a point of reference with that front knee. Press down into that front knee, and then maybe eventually we'll be able to take the arms over the head, stretch into your fingers. So stretch the fingers away from that left knee. Lift the pit of the belly. Keep everything lifting up the front body and stretching towards the front of the mat on the back one. And then in deep in your pose. Once you get deep in there, smile into some part. Maybe send a lovely smile into the place that's working the hardest. And let that smile feel like a mother's embrace, an understanding, complete love, complete compassion. And then the work is done. We'll come back up. We'll straighten our legs. <clears throat> Great. And then after a few moments, you take all the time you need at home if you're practicing this to recover. I know these guys have already recovered. We're going to cross our ankles. We're going to pull our ankles behind <clears throat> and come onto your hands and your knees. And we'll drop the belly, open the elbows, turn the toes and look up. Lift your chin, lift your eyes. And then we'll turn the elbows, we'll turn the feet and we'll push the floor away and round the back. Drop your head. And then release, turn the toes, lift your knees, and on the exhale, we lift up and back into Adho Mukha, downward facing dog. <coughs> Adho Mukha Shasana. Lift the hip bones, press the heels down. So the first one, I feel kind of sleepy and lazy. And just let that run through the body. And then the yogi inside, she'll start to show up. The yogi or yogi. And the energy will want to move. And you'll feel it in your legs, in your arms, in your back, in your mind. Good. Now from here we're going to come forward into plank pose. You can bring the feet together, press down into your hands, stretch into the crown of your head. Maybe feel as though your belly was on a big beach ball between you and the floor. Lovely big colourful beach ball. Remember those? And smile at all the fun we'll have soon when we all can get back to the beach. Good. And then put your knees on the floor, bend your elbows, place your chest and maybe your chin and drop your shoulders away from your ears. So your bottom is still left up. And then straighten your body. Now the hands are just there at the armpit chest. We're going to slide them back a wee bit and squeeze in with your elbows. Feel as though you're squeezing a tube of toothpaste to lift your head and lift your heart and then drag the hands towards the back of the mat. 
So they're not actually moving, but feel as though you're dragging the mat back to lift the heart. Now hold that and just lift your hands. Good. And then place the hands and release. Turn your head to one side and turn your palms up and drop your shoulders. Just drop everything. Let everything be relaxed. And then turn your head to the other side. Drop the shoulders. Okay. Let's go back and do that again. We place the hands. Drag the hands back a wee bit. Squeeze in with those elbows. Lift the heart. Lift the head. Drag the hands back. And see if you can come a wee bit higher. Maybe leave your belly button on the floor. Squeeze in. Squeeze the last little bit of the toothpaste. And and of course, if you're having fun, you could hold that longer. You drop the hands turned up, so drop all the joints. Wow. Just feel as though you just squeezed all the tension out of the body. And turn your head to the other side. Release, relax, let go. How about we take our hands out in front, palms facing each other. <coughs> and we put our forehead on the floor and lift your right hand and your left leg. Now once they're lifted, you want to try and keep a stretchy moving into both limbs and press down into that left hip. Keep the left hip on the floor. And then release. Soften everything, let it all go. And we go again, lift that left hand and that right leg. So keep the right knee as straight as you can. Stretch into your left hand, stretch back into your foot. And keeping your forehead on the ground might be a good option. And then release, relax, let it go. Good, now what would happen if we took our hands around behind us and stretch your hands back, palms facing each other. So that's going to lift your heart off the ground. You could turn the palms towards each other or you could clasp your hands and stretch your knuckles towards your feet and look straight ahead and smile. Good, let's leave that alone now. Drop the shoulders, drop the palms turned up. Relax. And then turn your head to the other side. Okay, so now we're going to come up. <clears throat> and we're going to just turn the toes, lift the knees, and move up and back and into downward facing dog again. Up and back. So as you lift up and back, feel your hands pressing down and away. So when we observe our poses, there's usually an element of equal and opposite. Equal and opposite energy. So you're trying to stretch your mat, break it in two. Good. And then slowly, like in slow motion, we're going to start to walk towards the front of the mat. As you get closer, come up onto your fingertips and come all the way up and gaze at your feet, gaze at your mat, and then lift your hands to your hips. And here we're pointing our elbows towards the ceiling, pressing into your feet. Let's inhale, come all the way up. We stand in Tadasana. Good. So we want to get a little bit of this and a little bit of that into our practice today. So now we're going to do like a warming exercise uh, called Five Tibetans. And I know you yogis that practice here in the temple all the time love your Five Tibetans. Sometimes we do a lot of them and sometimes we just do a few. So this morning we came up with the number 12, which is in between. Uh, some of us do a lot more. So Dar here likes to do how many? 30, 31, what are we up to? <laughs> so we add by threes. When you're learning your um, five Tibetans, um, we do 
maybe 9 or 12, 15, 18, 21 or 24. So when you want to move on, you add by threes. And there's five Tibetans. Now the first one is one that turns. So it's good to maybe come off your mat and open your hands out. So this one is the whirling dervish one. We spin to the right. So you're going to gaze out over the right hand. And you're just going to spin. You don't have to go very fast. Don't let your eyes move around. Your eyes are just gazing out over that right hand. Keep your elbows straight. And you're going to try and count 12 turns, 12 complete spins. And after a while, you know, you get used to doing this, you'll be able to go faster. And then when you've done your 12 spins, you're going to stop and don't look around the room. Let your eyes settle on one spot, maybe something on the ground. You could look at your fingertips. And then you're not going to move until the spinning is gone and feel the energy moving up through the chakras and out through the top of the head, washing away all the cell phone and computer and TV. Great, so now once your spinning is gone, if you're still spinning, just take your time because that's still working inside you. And of course, the more spins you do, the longer it might take. Be careful if you're doing that at home, try not to fall. So now we're opening our mat this way. And the second Tibetan, this is what we're going to do. We're going to come here, and we're just going to sit down, maybe not using our hands. Practice not using your hands to get to the floor. And I'm going to show you the easy version first. So feet on the floor, hands on the ground. You're going to inhale, lift, look at your legs, and exhale, release. Inhale, lift, look at your legs, and exhale, release. And notice the hands stay on the ground. So the harder or the more advanced version, legs are straight, hands are on the ground. We're going to inhale, lift, look at our legs, stretch the heels up, exhale, release. That's one. Off we go. Inhale, lift, exhale, release. Keep going. I can't count very well, so you at home or Sutta Dara or Annie, you're just going to do your own count. Good, but do each one as best you can, keeping the hands on the ground, trying to straighten those knees, that's always my thing, trying to straighten my knees. Good, look at your legs, on the inhale, you're going to relax and release back on the exhale. Big deep breaths. Good, keep going. You want to get to 12. Inhale, lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, lift. Exhale, release. So I don't know what I did there, but hopefully you're doing your count. So the same, we did 12 spins. We did 12 leg lifts there. We're going to turn onto our side and turn towards the back of our mat. And here we want to pull our mat back like this to make a little bit of a cushion for our knees. And here you can turn your toes, you can put your feet down. So think about lifting from the front of the knees to the groin and hips. From that area, lift up to the armpit. So this is all lifted up rather than leaning back. Lift this up, slide your hands down the butt, buttocks and legs and look up. Roll the shoulders open. So this is the inhale. And then exhale is just to release. Off we go. Inhale, lift. And exhale, release. Inhale, lift. And exhale, release. Keep going. Inhale, lift. And exhale, release. Good. So keep that moving. So it's important just to stretch everything in the front body. And in the back body, feel the shoulder blades coming together, feel the kidneys lifting up and in to the body. You're lifting the kidneys up and in. Slide the hands down, the legs on your mount. Open and close. What gland is going to benefit from this? So it's not about going back to catch the heels. We'll maybe get to that in a few minutes. This is just about inhale, lifting, and exhale, releasing. And once you've done 12, you're going to cross your ankles, 
roll over them, open that mat up, and come to sit, dandasana. So here, we want to try and glue our heels to the floor. Try not to have them moving around like this. Press the heels down, feet can be a wee bit open, and the hands are going to be here by our hips. Good. Usually we have the feet together, but it's okay to keep them a little open here. Because we're going to make a table, we're going to press the heels down, charge the body, lift, look behind you, and sit back down. Inhale, lift, and exhale, sit. Now there's an easier version for that, and that would be you keep going with yours, we're going to place the feet on the ground, hold the front of the shins, we could inhale, lift, look up, and exhale, round the back, straighten the elbows. Inhale, lift, look up. And exhale, round. For those of you doing the harder version, you're going to press your feet down, look behind you, and then try and sit back between your hands. Inhale, lift. And exhale, sit. You're trying to make a table shape with your body. Good. Very good. Once we've done our 12, we'll cross our ankles. We'll roll over. And we've arrived at the fifth Tibetan. So remember, we're working on 12. So the fifth Tibetan, uh, you're going to go from downward facing dog to upward facing dog. So usually when we get to downward facing dog, we exhale. The difference here is we inhale here and exhale upwards. So we're inhaling in downward, exhaling in upward. Inhale back, exhale forward. Now the easier version is the cat and cow. So you could just inhale, look up, drop the belly, create a little arch, and then push the floor away and round your back. All right, very good. So get a little movement, a little motion, a little energy. Good, and think what glands are benefiting here. Think about your thyroid your adrenals. Ooh, they're all just going to wake up and everything's going to work so much better because of your five Tibetans. Now, if you were stuck for time and you didn't get to do a full hour of practice yoga, you can just do the five Tibetans. Maybe do 12 of the five Tibetans and you're good to go for the day. All right, so now we finish in down dog. And then bend your knees, inhale it up, and on the exhale, just hop lightly to the front of your mat. Take your hands to your hips, push into your feet, come back up, and turn and step to the center of your mat. So some people might like a block. We have a block handy. And if you're a rich yogi, you might have two blocks. <laughs> We are rich in our temple because people donate their blocks, their belts, their time to make bolsters. We made these bolsters. Great. So it's a community. Even though we may not be here today together, we are always together in our hearts. And we love you, yogis. So off we go. We're going to do Uttita Chikinasana. Bending the knees, inhale. On the exhale, jump or step. So you could, you don't have to jump there, but you, you might like it after your Tibetans. We'll turn that left leg in and the right leg out. Good, keep this right rib cage coming around. And on your exhale, you're gonna reach out, way out, and turn right hand to the shin and left hand to the sky. Good, so this is where you might decide, do I need a block? You might want a block turned up high. Maybe some people will get to the floor, but it's okay to go to the shin. It's more important to have the good alignment, all the joints and the bones inside the body. We're gonna push into that back heel, inhale, come up. We're staying on this right side. Might need to rearrange the feet a wee bit. We're just gonna bend that right knee. 
and slowly move into Virabhadrasana too. Reach back into this left hand. Don't let this back leg collapse. Keep the hips in a nice straight line. Shoulders, arms, and then turn to look out over that right hand. Breathe. Good. Turn the palms up maybe for a moment and just see, see your own inner yogi smiling back at you. You know you'll feel good once you're done with your yoga. We turn our palms down, we're going to take a big inhale. And on the exhale, let's reach over now. We could put this elbow on the knee. And we'll drop this left arm all the way around and take it around by the ear. Turn your head, look up. Stretch into that left hand. Stretch back into the left foot. Some people will come to the block. Maybe some will turn the block down. And maybe after a while you can dispense of the block altogether. I'm going to gaze at one spot of the ceiling. Keep stretching, keep moving, keep working the pose. Bring the mind into the body. And then to come out of this, let this top hand lead you. Inhale, come back up. And then turn the feet, turn the feet. We've got to do those three poses on the other side. These are your standing poses for today. Throw in a few every day. We're going to take a big breath. First one is triangle, Uttita Trikanasana. Reach out over that left leg. Turn, left hand can come to the shin, can come to a block, or maybe to the floor. But if that back hip pops way out, then you need to come higher. Good, hold the pose. Now feel as though somebody had squeezed your body between two big sheets of glass. Bring everything into a nice straight line. Good. Squeeze it all in. Unless you're pregnant, then you're going to maybe have the front sheet with the big hole in it for your belly. And then press down into that back heel. Let's come back up. Reach back into this back hand and bend your left knee. Good. Bend. Stretch the groin, stretch the pelvic floor. Good, now everybody's body is different of course and we have to modify some of the poses if you have an injury or an illness or a particular tight spot. But we just do the best we can. When we find it, straighten that back leg. Straighten that back leg, good. Straighten that back leg. Once we find that little spot, that's where we must bring our breath, our attention, our energy. We're going to take a big breath and on the exhale, reach over that left knee. Place your elbow on the knee first. Elbow to the knee. Drop the right arm in front of the face. Take the arm over your face and then start to stretch out into that right arm. Stretch into that right foot. Making space, making distance from the hip all the way up and into the hand and all the way back and into the foot. Feel yourself arriving in the pose, in this moment, in this breath. Open the ribs. And then if you want to go deeper, maybe take your hand down to a block, maybe a high block, and then in increments turn the block down until you're able to get to the floor. That might take six months of practice. And then spinning and turning and opening the body up to the morning sunshine. And that sunbeam that's gone right into your heart. Let's inhale, come back up, come back home. Turn your feet and jump or step feet together. Standing in Tadasana. Great. So let yourself get lost in the practice. Let yourself have a little bit of freedom from all of the worries that we've been going on. With the virus, with sickness, with the worry, with the job. Yoga is free for you. If you have a mat, if you don't have a block, then we get some big books and make a block. <clears throat> and if you don't have bolsters, just take the pillows off your bed. Okay. So we're going to go back down to the floor because we have a few more back bends we want to investigate. <clears throat> so we're going to take our mat and we're going to turn it long ways again. 
Actually, let's stay this way, Sundar. Let's see this. I think it's going to be good. Okay, so two blocks or two big books. And this morning we're going to put this one long ways and the one behind higher. Okay, this is where we're going to put our spine. So the lower ridge of this block, you're going to catch the lower ridge of your shoulder blades. And then the other block is your pillow block. You're going to find a nice restful place there. And cross your shins and drop your hands. Drop your knees, drop your hands. Create this lovely feeling of wide open space in the front chest. And breathe. Feel the body just releasing on top of the hard block. Feel how soft your body is. Let it be even softer than that. And switch the cross of our shins. Drop the knees, soften the groin. And lovely to just have a moment to do this one pose. So, of course, if you're loving it, you could stay longer at home. We're going to place our feet on the floor, and you could come straight forward, or you could roll carefully off to the side. Next one, we're going to turn this block down, and we're going to take that block away. So we have a lovely wide block now, same spot, the lower ridge of the shoulder blades. And this time, see what it feels like to hold on to the tips of your elbows, and just drop your hands back behind. Now for some people, if your neck is very tight, you'll discover it right here. And then if it's very uncomfortable, go for pillow block, but have a no one. So if we're holding our elbows and everything's going good, then we can cross our shins <clears throat> and drop down and into that lovely place. The lovely places that we're able to find when we practice yoga. Places that are full of peace and they're deep inside of us. And we can find them just with a breath. So right now, if you're doing this pose, relax into the pose. Melt over the block. Give yourself permission to be very peaceful, very quiet. Now, if you haven't already switched the cross of your shins, go ahead and do that. So that's, of course, an upper back bend. And a lot of us are going to be on our computers and on our phones. Lately, I find myself with neck pain, and I'm looking down at this, and I'm like, I wonder why my neck is sore. Get a block, do some yoga, reverse whatever you were making yourself do. Okay, so we're going to bring the knees together. You could come forward or roll off to your side. And we'll get the belt close by for the next one. So here what we're going to do. We're going to lay down. <coughs> Feet are flat on the ground, slightly apart. <coughs> As we lift our hips up, try not to let your knees fall apart. Keep the feet pressing down. All we're going to do is we're going to take our hands over our head. And as we do that, we're going to inhale, lift our hips. And on the exhale, go back down. Okay, let's do it three times. Inhale, lift. And exhale. Just create like a little wave of motion. Releasing, relax. Okay, everything went well there. Next one, we're going to inhale, lift our hips, and bring that upper arm in under. This might turn your palm up, and then do the same on the other side. That will bring the shoulder blades together. Push into your heels, lift the hips. This is going to bring the chest towards your chin. Just keep the, the neck relaxed. Look at one spot, and then release. And then relax, release your shoulder blades, your arms, everything. When you come out of the pose, truly come out of the pose. But then on the other side, when you're in the pose, bring everything you've got. <coughs> okay, 
go a little deeper. We're going to inhale, lift the hips, bring the upper arms, the shoulder blades together. This time we clasp our hands in underneath our body and press down into the little finger to lift the hips. Don't let the knees fall apart. Stretch the knees towards the front of the mat. Keep the lower or the back of the neck nice and long. Don't turn your head. Just keep looking up at the ceiling. You can keep the buttocks soft or clenched, whichever helps. And then release and relax. Relax completely out of the pose. Just let it go. Get the belt. It's getting tricky. So we put that belt around the right foot, <coughs> around your mirror. <coughs> And we're going to inhale, lift the hips. Now the arms know what to do. You'll notice that the more you do, the more the arms and the shoulder blades know how to get to the pose. So we're going to just walk our hands down the belt a little bit. I'm going to bring this left leg in. Bring the left knee towards your chest. And then see if you can straighten that leg up. Push into the right heel, push up into the left heel. Then bend and come back out, release, relax out of the pose. And then just try again. Remember, if it's fun and you like it, you can stay longer. We're going to take the belt around the left ankle. And just come and help. Good. And when you lift your hips, you're going to hold on to that belt with both hands. Hold on with both hands, walk your hands down. Lift the hips, shoulder blades come together. Now this right knee is going to come towards your chest. And then take that right heel up into the sky. And as the heel comes up, let it lift the hips up. Let the left heel drive down to lift the hips up. Good, big breath. And then bend the knee, release. Come back down, release. Release and relax, let go. Now, if that was fun, the last one of this little series, relax your whole body. Maybe bring your feet a little bit closer. We're going to inhale, lift the hips, bring shoulder blades, upper arms together. They might feel like walking down the mat a little bit so that you can grab onto the front of your ankles and push the hips up. Look at that one spot up there again. Stretch into the front of your thighs, your knees. Big smile, wide open heart. Yoga flowing in. And then release. Release your shoulders, release your arms. Soles of the feet together, soak the body kanasana. Drop the knees and let go. So that's a nice way out of the pose. Okay, so we have one or two more poses to get to. Um, we, we're not going to do an inversion today other than this. So we've got ourselves into, all of that was Setubanda. Now we're going to do Setubanda with the block. And this will be our inversion. We're going to take this block, see if you can slide it in high. Come onto your tippy toes, lift your hips, and slide that block in under your bony pelvis. Don't bring it up here to your soft kidneys. They will not like it. But down here, it feels like delicious. And then we're going to get our hands and clasp our hands around the other side of the block. Now the arms, shoulder blades coming in closer and closer. And if everything's going well, we lift our feet up off the floor and then take your feet to the ceiling. Now, the hips are resting on the block, and our goal is to straighten those bold knees. Stretch up into your feet. Maybe some yoga teacher might come and put a sandbag on your feet. So hold the pose, hold the pose. I'm just coming out just to pretend I'm putting a sandbag on Sutara's feet. But it's really a block. So he's going to hold that. 
And that's something on your feet kind of helps the legs to stay intelligent so that they don't get tired. Good. So if it was going to be a sandbag and your feet are drifting towards your face, you want to take the feet back. And this will keep the heels over the hips and the hips on the block. All righty. Good. So you could stay like that for a long time, draining all of the tension out of the body, helping varicose veins, hemorrhoids, digestive problems. This is really good for thyroid as well. This is the thyroid pose. I'll take the block off. So, the... so now we're going to bend the knees and put the feet flat on the ground. Now, if you've been on the block for a little bit, you don't just take it out. You hold on to your block and lift your hips up three times before you come off it. You could hold it with your hands or if you're used to it, you don't have to. Good. So the yoga is a real act of self-love. Really feel like you're looking after somebody that you love. We learn a lot about love through our yoga practice. <clears throat> okay, so our last pose, because we've been focusing a little bit on back bends, back bend weekend, we take our chair. We did this last week, and I really like it for everything. It really is so wonderful for the body. And some people, they just can't get into back bends, but when they try it in the chair, they realize, I just need a little bit of help. <clears throat> so, I'm going to show first the very easy version, very nice, very relaxed. You might have a little setup like this. This is for your head, and this is going to be for your feet. This is the way I like to do it. Okay. So you see the way the chair is turned. Now, some people may not have a chair like this. So look around your house and see, what can I do a back bend over? I bet you'll find all sorts of things. So you're going to step your feet through. And you're going to bring your bottom to the back of the chair. Way back. Like this. Like you're going to fall out the back of the chair. See, I'm holding my wee block in my feet. Press down onto the back of the chair and lift your heart. And start your back bend right here. When you come back, you can scooch in a little bit if you need to. Push the bar of the chair away until you're able to roll around the chair. Push that bar away and maybe rest your head on your support system. And then the last little bit is to take the hands in under the chair, hold the opposite bars, push your block away. And then you're going to get your heels up onto the block. Stretch the block away, pull your toes back. Roll open here in the front. Now some people don't need all the support. They can open the neck this way, and let the head just hang. But when you want it to be maybe a little bit more restorative, it's okay to rest your head. Now I'm going to show you how to get out of it, but you stay in, Sudhadar. I'm pushing into my feet, and I'm going to come up on an inhale, and I'm not going to stop anywhere along the way. So these guys are going to stay in their pose just for another little moment. Good. So, so the dar, let's put the hands in under the chair to show the, the full pose. And is it okay if I take this support away? I'm going to take his support away. This is very bendy. Good. And sometimes you might need somebody in the room with you to help you with your block. So say if your block was too far away, somebody could place it just in the right spot. Keep the legs active. Stretch the lower back towards the heels. Lift the pit of the belly towards the front and upper body. We're going to put our feet back on the floor. God. We're going to release the hands. Now remember, we're going to come back up on an inhale. Inhale all the way back up. Put your feet each side of the bar, uh, the legs of the chair. So the heels are on the outside. Push your heels down. Sit back into the chair a little bit. 
Good, now remember, I'm your opposite. So take your right hand across the bar, left hand to the seat. So you're gonna hold the seat underneath, inhale, lift, and exhale, twist. Inhale, lift, and exhale, twist. And every last breath, inhale, lift, exhale, twist all the way around, gaze at one spot, smile, and release, come back out. And pause for the inhale and switch on the exhale. Left hand over, right hand behind. See so if you find the chair seat. Some people might be able to find the opposite corner. Don't let your heels come up. Press into the heels. Lift and twist. Lift and twist. Look for a chair in your hands that you can do this pose on. Big breath. Look how happy the lungs are to have a little twist. How happy the abdominal organs are. Good and brilliant. Now, one little word. If we were in our back bend on the chair for longer than a couple of minutes like we were, then we wouldn't do a deep twist. Okay? If you're in a long back bend, don't do the twist. Just maybe a tiny bit. But we weren't in that long. Okay, let's step carefully out of our chair. And we're going to get our mat. And we're going to open the mat up again. And remember, we're practicing sitting without using our hands. Maybe open your knees and just sit back down. Great. So here, we're getting ready here for Shavasana. How do we move into Shavasana? Lay on the floor, turn your palms up. Leave a little space in under your arms that the air can come all the way up and around. Straighten one leg, just deliberately drop it to the side. Straighten the other leg and let it just drop. And just feel yourself melting into the floor. Good. So just be aware of the work that you've done. Feel that work. Feel the openness in the body. The energy still might be running around a little bit. So we want to like kind of settle the energy. So slow the breath. Slowing the breath sometimes helps you to slow the heart rate. And then we're able to store the prana that we've gathered. Feel like you're storing little puddles of prana inside the body. Little puddle of prana in the back of the heart. Maybe in the front of the brain. Maybe dribble a little prana down the sides of the liver, on top of the kidneys. Feel as though everything inside of you was better because you did the yoga. That there was a lovely feeling of natural energy in there. Feel your eyes, your ears, your tongue. Feel the bones of your body. Be aware of those tiny, tiny little baby red blood cells forming right now, right this second. Breathe into them. New life inside of you every moment. So if you were feeling like you needed a longer shavasana, you could stay, of course, as long as you need. Try not to fall asleep. Be consciously relaxed like a feeling like settling to sleep, but enjoying that feeling of total comfort, total comfort inside your own skin. And then start to move your fingers and your toes. And bending your knees, roll over to your right side. And take that last long deep breath, truly 
relaxing and releasing on the exhale. Leave all your worries right here. And then come back up into a comfortable cross-legged sitting place. And acknowledge yourself, acknowledge your effort in your yoga practice. And acknowledge all of the yogis in the room. There's not so many this morning. Acknowledge all the yogis all over the world. And think about all of those people who are fighting this virus. We offer our yoga up for them, for their healing, for their peace of mind. Let's send our ohms to them. Inhale. Love the one in you who is sad. Love the one in you who is scared. Love the one in you who is angry. Love the one in you who is lonely. Love the one in you who hates herself. Love all the ones who you are. And then you will know how to love the world. Namaste. Thank you for joining us. Have a lovely day. Try to find a little sunshine somewhere. Try to take some deep breaths. We're all going to get through this. We're all coming home. Namaste. Mm -hmm.